Morning. I'm in Berea, Ohio, just south of the Cleveland Airport. But yeah, I got here about an hour ago. So I just set down my tarp, my mat, and my bivvy's waterproof. So I'm warm. Oh man, you guys gotta try these. They're brownie. But anyway, there's a trash truck right over there. Yeah, I am caught between the CSX line and the Norfolk Southern. Um, it was a big interchange here in Berea. So I'm going to get up, rolled up. I am almost to Medina. We'll go see Matt. But I rode all night from uh, Martinsburg up through Conway and into Cleveland. And it crew changed here in Cleveland out in Collinwood. And uh, they stopped here at the interchange at a light, just like I thought they would in Berea. I get off here a lot in Berea. But it's you look on the map, it's right south of uh, the Cleveland Airport. Yeah, kind of gives you an idea. There are just so many small trees growing up that it took me a pretty good while to find this little area to lay down. But, yeah, there's that. I guess this is a trash truck. I don't know, or a tow truck or something. I can't see through that scrub. I'm gonna get rolled up here, and there's a lot of foamers that come down here too to Berea. So I'm gonna wait that sun gets up a little bit more. Oh, I had a doctor's appointment this morning at 8:30. One of those telephone call doctor's appointment, and it was my specialist. And uh. He said that my CD4 count is 612, which that is like, I've never, I don't think my CD4 count has ever been that high, which is excellent. And viral load is still undetectable, so, and every, everything come out great as far as uh, the immune system goes. Hey, I hear something. Can't tell what direction yet. Uh, it's on the south side. Yeah, the lines kind of merge like this. Here in town, there's four different directions. All right, got rolled up. There's I am. That's what I come in on last night. Uh, it wasn't that bad. Can I walk out the same way I walked in this morning? Yeah. I probably scared the crap out of this guy here. Well, I thought it was a garbage truck. Big tow truck. I come in from the east. There's a hardware store right on the other side of the tracks here in Burger King, a Speedway. That's going back towards Cleveland just going to Chicago and other points but it meets down with the CSX line and they cross each other down there not a 
not it's an interchange more than a four-way you can go four different directions but it's not like a run over crossover you have to look on the map or I'll put a link in the video uh, to the map of the rail interchange here I still ain't brushed my beard out I'm gonna go to Burger King and get some coffee guy in a tow truck probably still scratching his head <sighs> yeah the depot in Berea is just oh I don't know half mile down this way west yeah I got off uh, between that road crossing and right where I'm standing there is an overhead signal system up past the overpass here sometimes they'll have to catch that, that red block and they stop right in here and that's what I was hoping he'd do I could have got off in Collingwood and just uh, take the city bus but I stayed on crew change counting on it and having faith that the train would stop right here and it did it does eight times out of ten with me now if it wouldn't have I'd have been on my way to Chicago or New Baltimore oh look at this sunshine oh it always feels 15 degrees warmer against a wall or reflecting that heat. Anyway. I got off right about there about I don't know 6 30 this morning went over in them woods and slept for about an hour I thought he was stopping there for a minute well, I'm a Go down to Burger King. I kind of got warmed up and brushed, brushed up some. Yeah, I'll put a link in the description of Berea, Ohio, and you can kind of look at the map of the rail, see how that interchange works.
thinking what I'm thinking. What's well, going through a lot of snow? That's what I was covered with this morning. That snow dust blows up. I wish it still would have been, wouldn't have been dark when I got off. Showed what it looked like when, uh, when I got off the train. I was covered in that white dust powder snow. I'm not far from coffee. It's, it's supposed to get 40 degrees today. I think Saturday night's the coldest, 18. But I picked a good good week to quit sniffing glue. I mean, uh, to make it up to Ohio. Here's the old two-story signal house where they used to control traffic across the interchange. Berea. That's blue and white. That may have been old Conrail. And there's the overhead signal system. Direct traffic across all the interchanges here. It kind of runs with each other. Maybe a block and a half city block. Then it splits again like it is here. You get traffic coming in here and you get traffic coming in here all on one line right up here uh, I think we got one coming too somebody left their gear over there Uh, it's just some hobo, I guess. Well, that's one good thing about being up north in the winter time. It just weeds out all the all the ones who can handle it and all the ones who can't. But I always like for 31 years and during the winter I was always up north. and all trains maybe something volatile that signal maintainer he's got a key that fits that that lock that goes up to walk I've just seen a work truck I need to keep walking there's a McDonald's up, not far. All right, all right, we're kind of down, we're pointing west. We're kind of down right where the main interchange is. Uh, 
There's the signal house I was just at. Let's see if I can get it in the. Yeah, right there. Well, to your left, tracks go to Cleveland. And also, on the tracks on the right, they go to Cleveland, but it goes to South Cleveland and other places in the Cleveland area. But going west, you go to the right towards uh, Elyra, Lyra, or however you pronounce it, Bellevue. Toledo, or you go to the left down towards Greenwich and Fostoria, back where I was a few months ago, like out towards Fort Wayne and all that. But every now and then you'll have a train that comes off this line right there and needs to go over. So there's an interchange right up here, it hops over onto this rail, and vice versa. You got some coming out of the southwest that need to go further northeast like through downtown uh out to collinwood yard etc etc let's see if i can zoom in on i really can't see the screen ain't bright enough there's a little creek a river up ahead past that building but there's probably not no footing uh, clearance won't clear man or whatever they call it, so I'm gonna have to walk down this road to McDonald's. And anyway, yeah, Burger King and Dunkin' Donuts Speedway Circle Cage to the left over that overpass and downtown that way. But I'm gonna keep walking as long as I stay walking, I'm all right. Well, I think this is. Brittle Creek. I have no idea where that water's coming from. I mean, there's a wall right there, so it must be a pipe going underneath. But there's a brittle trail, but I can't find the name of this creek. A little river here, the NS Track Bridge is just right over there. McDonald's is straight ahead. Maybe put in the comments what creek this is. Oh, I think Matt, Matt Mantell's coming to pick me up. Hmm. There you get. Yeah, I couldn't get in McDonald's or Arby's or anything. They got it locked up. Just drive through only. It's that line <clears throat> heading down towards Fostoria, Greenwich, or Cleveland that way. Well, that's back where we were earlier, about a mile and a half down. That's Arby. I see if Matt can come pick me up here from Medina. Maybe 20 miles to Medina. Not bad little burrito. Three bucks. Sausage, egg, and cheese. Maybe get some train action.
Who are you? I'm the bull. You're the bull? <laughs> I got a bull right here. Hey, Matt. <laughs> What's up? How you doing, brother? All right. Good to see you, man. All right, let me go grab my yeah. stuff. Yeah, grab your stuff. All right. Yeah, that's Matt Mantell I was telling you about. I'll put his link to his train videos in the description of this video here. Here's Matt's guest room where I'll be staying for a day or two before I head out again. You'll have to check Matt's videos out. Uh, I'll put his link in the description. Check this out. Matt's man cave. Yeah, I remember that sound now. Oh, I suck now as bad as I did back in the 80s, 90s. Yeah, I suck more now than I did in the 80s. And That's 90s. a tough game. It is real tough. Man, this is really cool. You I've never been in anything like this private. You you can sit in here for two days and you you can see something different, like on one of the walls or like in the and everything in here. I could tell a I could tell a heck of a story about everything. Man, everything's got a story to it. And even popcorn. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I am a, I love popcorn. It's one of my one of my favorites. Man. That's the fish I caught out of Lake Erie through the ice right there. That was just under 12 pounds. Pulled it right through the ice. It was, man, of all the fishing and hunting I've ever done, pulling that thing out of the ice was by far the coolest thing I've ever done in my life, as far as all that stuff goes. It was quite a thrill. And up here, you, you recognize that up there. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's got its own... <laughs> Little shrine in here. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I put that in. I don't there. think I've seen it in the frame. Oh, what else? Hey, it is really awesome in here. I'm going to roll out my sleeping bag right here. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> no. it's, the, it's the warmest room in the house, I'll tell you that, especially when all these games start heating up a little bit. There's my uh, couple of sheds up there. But, yeah, it's a it's been a fun hobby. I actually got into, uh, well, I was rebuilding them for other people at one time, and uh, I, I got into placing like Pac-Man machines at some of like the little local pizza shops and stuff. So I'd pick up a Pac-Man machine for like 200 bucks, sink 100 bucks into it, get the monitor working and all the electronics, and then put it in a pizza shop, and um, they would get 40%, I would get 60%, so all they do is just put it in their little lobby. And then when, when people come in to get their pizza, they see it sitting there, and they're like, oh, whoop, drop yeah, a quarter in it. Waiting on there. So I had about a half a dozen locations at one time. I'm down to like two or three now. And uh, But every game in here has paid for itself, <laughs> like, by doing that. I never made a ton of money. It was like, I don't know, 40 or 50 bucks a month usually. But over 12 months times five years, <laughs> you know, I'd have 400 bucks in a game, and... You know, the thing, every, like I said, every one of them's paid for themselves and then some. So I had a little fun money account just buying new games and fixing them. And it's been a fun little hobby. And there's well, some, really, I've never met anybody that 
done the game repair. Yeah, and, yeah. and it, it just kind of happened by fluke. I, I um, got one, that Mortal Kombat game right there, I, bu I bought it when I was down in Columbus, and I had it in my apartment for a while, and then I was moving all around, and I asked my parents if I could put it in their, in their basement, and so there it sat for like 10 years, and then when I finally got this house, my dad was like, hey, why don't you get that stupid game out of my basement? <laughs> so I was like, okay, cool, I had this little room with nothing in it, and I figured I'd put it in here, and that's, that's what I did, and I played it again, I started playing it again for, I don't know, six months or something, until I got sick of it. But then I went to turn it on one day and it didn't work. And I'm like, oh man, I, I knew nothing about like how to fix them or what, you know, how they even worked. And I'm like, oh, I'm an electrical engineer. I should be able to figure this thing out. Like it's not, it can't be that complicated. And plus there's a ton of websites with them. So I got it working again. And then I was like, well, that was kind of a fun little project. I think I'll get another one. So I bought another one and then another one and then another. And it just kind of, kind of snowballed. And then I started the, the business part of it where I was putting them in places and stuff and but that's kind of how, how it all started, I guess. Kind of by accident, like everything else in my life. Yeah, when, when that started out, it, it just all came back to me. We're just hearing that sound. And... Yeah. And I, another thing I love about these things is just the artwork on them and stuff. It, it's kind of like, I don't know, I kind of look at them like a, almost like a little piece of pop yeah, culture art, you know I what I mean? I remember the Star Wars game that come out. Yeah, it just had Just seeing that Millennium Falcon mm -hmm. made you want to play it. Yeah, I really don't remember this one either. Dra there was a Dragon Slayer was the original one, and then of course this one, the original Dragon Slayer came out in 1980 or 81, and then this came out about 10 years later, and it was, it was number one, it was kind of a rare game, and it was never really po that popular, and uh, the ones that did survive, they, they converted a lot of them into different games once people weren't putting money in them. So not a lot of them survived, that's why that was... That one's probably worth more than all the other games in here combined is about. That's a pretty rare, rare bird. I was actually saving up to buy a pinball machine when I saw this thing pop up. Oh, I was thinking that too. I, I haven't worked on pinball, so I don't know much about them. And they're not cheap either, but I had, had about half the money saved up to buy a pinball machine and saw that thing pop up. And I'm like, oh man, I had the opportunity to buy one of those like 10 years ago. And I was like, man, I can't, I can't not buy that thing. <laughs> So, it's been around since like February, I think. I seen a show called American Restoration, and they brought a big pinball machine in there, and them guys can repair and oh, refurbish yeah. anything. Yeah, the pinball guys are a different breed than the arcade guys. They're kind of different skill sets. But the new pinballs are basically just like computers. I mean, they're, they're so complicated that 